On May 20, 1998, Jida Nagawa gave birth to a healthy baby boy. She and her husband named him Nathan Chirabu. Nathan weighed 3.5 kilograms and did everything every other baby did. His life has since changed. He is now 15 years old. He cannot go to school because his condition does not allow him to sit for long. When I'm doing my papers, I have to be, I lie on my belly. Nathan is homeschooled now. He cannot play as much as other children. And while he loves to ride his bicycle, that has become a task. Feels like my joints are, have been dislocated or maybe like it hurts, like they are twisted, they are twisted and I can't explain it. He knows he has sickle cells and he has learned to cope with the help of his mother. I feel really good when she's around me. I feel secure. His mother is a hairdresser. She had seven children and is now 56 years old. Her life now is dedicated to taking care of Nathan, her youngest. She had another son before Nathan. He was a sickler too. He died when he was nine years old. For him, I was not aware of the disease because I had never experienced it. So it was hard to, what, to understand. I was just crying. The first sign, crying, crying. When Nathan came along, she knew better when she saw similar signs. She took him for a checkup and her worst fear was confirmed. He too had sickle cells. Sickle cell disease is a hereditary blood disorder characterized by red blood cells that assume an abnormal rigid sickle shape. Sickling decreases the cell's flexibility and results in a risk of various complications. Sickle cell conditions are inherited from parents in much the same way as blood type, hair color and texture, eye color and other physical traits. When I saw it, I started crying. The doctors told me, no, don't cry. You are not alone. There are so many. Indeed, there are so many others. 20% of Uganda's population is believed to carry the sickle cell gene. It's important for people to know their sickle cell status. To know your standing, one must take a sickling test. It will give you positive results for a patient and positive results for a carrier. It will give you negative results for someone who is purely normal. So when you get a sickling test done and it's positive, it's ideal that you go on to do the confirmatory test. Nathan's mother was blamed for passing the disease on to him, but she stopped blaming herself when she learned that for a child to become a sickler, both parents had to have been carriers. Nathan experiences joint and chest pains, but the worst is the severe backache. We call it the painful crisis. That's the worst bit of sickle cell disease. If somebody could take away that pain, you can live very well. <laughs> Get used to it, you can never outgrow it. No. So <laughs> it's too, too painful. The pain occurs in organs or joints and results from tissue damage caused when sickle cells block blood flow. You know, our cells are sickled instead of being round, the red blood cells. So as they are moving in the veins, one of them comes and blocks the way. When it blocks, all others come and clog on it. So the blood comes and pushes, it can't pass through. So it damages all the tissues around that area. And that is what causes the pain. There is no cure for sickle cells. The most they can do is ensure that Nathan has proper care, takes his medicine on time, and then they can deal with everything else that comes his way when and if it comes. I waited for my death personally. <laughs> they used to give us ages at which you have to die. Yeah, you can have a full life <laughs> even with sickle cell disease. The goals of treatment are to prevent infections, relieve pain, and prevent or control complications. Infections are the leading cause of death in sickle cell disease. Pain attacks are the leading cause of emergency room visits and hospitalizations. Because infections may lead to death, special measures are taken to prevent or reduce the severity of infections. World Sickle Cell Day celebrations this year will be held in Luero on the 27th of this month. The day is celebrated to create awareness about the disease. Josephine Karunji Musisi, NTV.